Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Hey, I'm Scott Ruthven and uh, tonight I'm going to do a painting demonstration for you all. Uh, I'm working in oils tonight and I think what I'll do is uh, a landscape, because um, I like landscape painting, right? And um, I like this time of night where, it's kind of like now actually outside here in Colorado, where you've got the... Um, uh, you know that kind of the twilight the sun is setting but on a cool summer night you get these cool shadows and uh, maybe it's a nice respite from a hot day but I have a great photo reference I want to use tonight and um, I'm going to try a couple of different colors as you'll see here in a minute I have um, uh, quinacridone red as my red and um, then I'm going to do um, some greens I'll talk about them in a minute as I switch my camera over here so uh, good evening, Jay. Thanks for joining. So um, what I'm going to try to do with this sunset is not make it a, you know, a hot sunset, but a, a give the still, still a feeling of the cool earth as the sun goes down, kind of goes below some clouds. Um, you're going to see the sunset, but I'm going to, with the, the colors on my palette, I'm going to try to keep the, the greens and everything um, basically in... Um, you know, kind of in a cool tone, not too warm. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm painting an 8x10 tonight. And I am, um, let's see, 8x10. Yeah, I'll show you the information here in a minute. I've got it all set out on my palette. So let me switch over to that. I'll move over here and I'll get started right away. See you in a second. Okay, I need to turn a light up a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so eight by 10, and I'm painting on this Jack Richardson gessoed panel. This is the warm brown one. I've been painting on these for a bit several weeks you've seen it but there's the label if you're looking for those there's also a link in the uh, description below here and then like i said the um i've got a couple of colors on on here i i use this quinacridone red uh, this is a gambling paint and i will use this um interchangeably with alizarin permanent alizarin permanent's a little darker so this is what this uh, quinacridone red looks like squeezed out here um, this is a very uh, high tint strength color. You get very pure, very um, uh, bright, clean tints when you mix this with white. Alizarin Crimson's pretty as well, but it's a little darker, a little smokier looking. And then I'm adding a Viridian on here tonight. I just grabbed this tube. I got this, uh, I won a little set of these, so I haven't tried this brand before, but I needed a Viridian. I don't usually have Viridian on my palette. Um, so, uh, the reason I've picked Viridian is it's a cool green. Some artists will actually use it kind of like a blue. I haven't really gone that far. I might, but I've never really liked Viridian, honestly. I've never felt the need to, to paint with it. In fact, I don't think you've seen me paint anything with Viridian yet. Um, what's nice about these two together, though, is that, um, I'm going to remove them here. They're near complements on the color wheel. See, they gray down very nicely. And the gray, um, you can make, well, I'll show you here. You can make the, um, the mixture look very blue. So when I mix these together, and I'll need to put some white into it so you can really kind of see the tint of it. Look at the different colors I'm getting there. So when I'm in here, that's very blue to my eye. Green over here and of course, a, you know, a kind of a cool red, magenta type of red, violet. So I think um, I can go a long way with this color combination in both um, creating a painting that has that cool atmospheric effect to it, 
and also somewhat of a limited palette. These are going to be my workhorse colors for tonight. So, let me put some gloves on here, and I'll get started. How is everybody tonight? Let's see, I've got Phil on too. Hi, Phil. Cat, you're joining too. So good to see you all here. We are um, in May now. Lord, can you believe it? How quick is this year going? <laughs> Way too fast for me. Yeah, I, um, well, the good news is I've painted at this effort here longer than I thought I might be able to, so I'm excited about that. Okay, well, I think, you know, in this scene, I always start by asking what's my lightest light, darkest dark, how, you know, do I have any real darks? What am I really looking at here? And, um, hi, Rachel, thanks for joining. Glad to have you here tonight. Um, so the sun is going to be my lightest light for sure. And everything else is going to uh, come down in value quite quickly because you want to support that. Um, you can't make the sun bright if everything else is bright. So the other things need to be a little darker. And, um, let me adjust my mic here. There we go. So, uh, my upright trees are going to be my darkest dark there. And... Yeah, that grass, everything kind of on the horizon and below is in, in the shadow in almost one tone there, one value. So I'll keep that in mind here as well. I've done a little drawing just to give um, a roadmap for me, so I'm not spending a whole lot of time on that. And uh, when I do, do a drawing, you know, it's probably one of the most important things to decide is where your horizon line is going to be. I've placed mine right below center here, about half an inch three quarters of an inch. And then I build from that. You know, I, I use that uh, atmospheric and linear perspective in this piece is going to, you know, tell the story of depth. So knowing where my horizon line is and uh, laying that out here, the shapes so that they are um, pleasing on the canvas is a key part to getting this right. Okay. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is, is probably get a, a pile of green going um, that I feel like I can work with here. So I'm just going to grab a few colors. And um, at night, you know, we lose the intensity a lot of these colors. Wow, that's a pretty mixture right there, isn't it? Um, you lose a lot of the intensity of colors, although on a cool night with a little moisture in the area, you get some really saturated colors. So they're not so bright because the light's low. And, um, but they can be nice and saturated. So let me try to find something like that here, really going into this Viridian. And that's a pretty light. That's really pretty light. So I think I'm going to have to go in and make a little green here to begin with. Um, when I say make a green, instead of just using Viridian as my base, I'm using ultramarine blue and a little cad yellow light. I'm choosing the light because it's more on the green side and a cooler, the cad yellow light is cooler than the cad yellow medium. See that? It's got more orange in it or red in it, so it gets a little bit warmer in value here. So. Um, that's why I'm choosing that. So I gotta get this value, this green down in value. It's too light right now. So I'm just grabbing different things, different colors here and see if I can get a, a pleasing green. I do need to warm it up a bit. And I'm getting a nice pile of color going here, which is okay. I might even add a little bit of ochre in here just to Make it a little more earthy. I want a nice pleasing green, but nothing too... Um, yeah, I don't want anything that looks... Um, you know, fake. That's the kind of... That, that's really a problem I have with... Um, with the Viridian, is it does look a little bit... Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it didn't look like a natural green to me, so I always mix my greens. I do have sap green here, which is a warmer transparent green. 
and I'll use that from time to time um, if I'm trying to really get my blue mixture up or my green mixture up to a, a saturated green I might reach for that at the end to boost it up a little bit all right well there's a green a pretty good green pile here and the value I'm not sure if I'm quite dark enough yet but I'll just mix that up because I don't want to be starved on having enough green um, you know another nice pure color I see over here is this the mountains back there so I'm gonna start with that green let me see if I can find that kind of a violet color with these two the Viridian and the Quinacridone that's a little bit on the red side so I'll add some more of the green you know what actually that's gonna be a really good cloud color right there that base of clouds very nice So by building these piles here on my palette first, now I'm getting a little too green, um, you know, I can compare the values and work some of this out right next to each other on the palette before I even have to paint. Now both of these colors, you know, they have a high tinting strength. They stain one another pretty quickly. So I don't want to go um, too crazy you know, by grabbing big chunks of color to mix in here, or I'll really change the mixture quickly. Okay, that's a nice, nice color there. And then, uh, yeah, my mountains. Probably going to be, you know, a little bit of this mixture, but I'm going to have to go into the ultramarine blue a little bit more to get the color I'm looking for for that bank of mountains back there. These are really pretty colors right now that I like, you know, I like making the mountains um, stand out with a nice clean violet. Our mountains here in Colorado are, are like that at the end of the day quite often. Sun sets behind them because they're on the west side. And once that sun's over, over there, it makes the mountains look pretty, pretty blue. All right. I don't know if that's quite the right color there. If I compare it to my greens, it's definitely lighter, but it's something to start with. We'll get it down here on the palette and then I'll have something to grab from. Okay, and then my darkest green, you know, is definitely got to have more of the, uh, it's a little more, I'm going to put a little warmth in the in the darks here. That's going to be the area I'm going to have some of those those warms in there. I can sneak some reds. I've got a transparent um, transparent red here from Gamblin tonight. That's that warm earth spot on my palette that I I keep going with, and that seems pretty good there. Well, why don't I build some of this on the, get some color going up here. Uh, well, I did a uh, painting the other day on the patio, which I filmed and I'll make a video. I have to edit it down, but, um, oh, I did that the other night and I didn't wash my brushes afterwards. Um, so I had to, had to spend some time, had to put some time in this afternoon and get these cleaned up, but it did stain my brushes a little bit. Look at that. We'll see if it comes out a little bit. Never had that happen. All right. I need a little medium, so I'm going to use uh, Gamblin's solvent-free gel, or actually this is a fluid. I usually use the gel. That's the one I squirt out on the palette, but I've got this tonight. 
I have them all tonight, but I'll just use this one. I just pour a little in my cup. More than I think I'll need. Clip that on my palette. And that just adds fluidity to my colors so they move around easy. It also imparts a bit of a gloss to the color when they dry. This is a bit of a trick. Um, when I plein air paint in an event, you know, a lot of us, you have to find a way to make your, get your colors to dry. Um, and uh, when they dry, you want them to still look luminous and, and the darks especially to be nice and an even sheen on your canvas afterward. And so uh, a lot of the times the trick to doing that will be um, putting a little bit of this kind of these fluid mediums into your paint. And then when they dry, you, um, you know, you get that, not only does it dry faster, but they have kind of an even, more even sheen to them. Okay, so I'm going to start with some of my darks here. And um, I'm using the darks of these shrubs that are on the ground kind of as a, um, um, as a lead in. So I'm kind of planning around with those right now. This one's going to go right off the palette, or the, the painting canvas, rather. And then this guy back here, kind of the same thing. Uh, And then as I go back, this is going to get a little cooler and a little bit lighter. And I can just take some of the other colors on my palette and make that happen. But I see some nice... Um, and I've designed this. I'm not copying the photograph. If you've watched me <laughs> enough here over the last 20 weeks or so. Gosh, 20 weeks already. Um, you know, you know that I'm not really copying the photos. I'm using them as a uh, jumping off place here to, to get an idea, to get concepts down, but really design something. So, okay. Um, you know, this brush here is a little mechanical. It's, it's a um, synthetic, which is fine by itself, but... Um, I kind of I'm gonna switch over here to a hog's hair. I just like the feel of that when I'm scratching in trees and such. So I've got this dark going. Now let me make the the dark of my trees. And um, now that's way too green. And I want kind of a neutral color here. And. Um, yeah, that feels pretty good right there, actually. I'm just looking for a dark. If uh, Have you guys ever read Carlson's Guide to... Uh... Hey, Dana. Thanks for joining. Good to see you again. Um, have you guys ever read Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting? If you haven't, you probably should. It's a good book. And... Um... Let's see here. So I'm going to cool this, knock this green back a little bit with some of that quinacridone red. Anyway, Carlson, um, you know, basically it was one of the people, he wasn't the first, but in his book he talks about, um, you know, that the, as a plane changes in the landscape, you get a different value. And notably that upright planes like trees, verticals, um, you know, they're going to uh, oftentimes be the darkest in a landscape, at least, that's lit from the, you know, the sun above. And then um, anything at like a 45 degree angle, like a mountain, that's going to be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit lighter in value. And then flat planes, like the ground plane there, are oftentimes going to be some of the lightest 
And this scene surely does um, kind of fit that bill. Now you'll notice that I'm using this pile and I'm moving over to my right and I'm adding a little more blue to this as I go. Um, and that's because I want to, um, I'm lightening it as well. You know, I'm wanting to push these trees here further back in space. And they're, they're kind of unique too, so I'm changing it up a little bit as far as the color temperature and such. And then as I go further back there, they're still going to be dark, but they're really going to be, you know, less green. They're further off in the distance there. Now they look really blue on here right now, but as I put in the blue of, uh, of other things, they, they won't. You know, like the blue of that mountain bank back there. That, you know, is that color right there. So it's very different. And if I keep these piles going on my palette and keep them separated, then I've got a pretty good shot of... Um, you know, being able to go back to those colors in the future if I if I need just a little bit more of that, you know. Now on here you can see, so these are all trees and they're all similar. Um, let's see how to put this. I've changed the mixtures I go back into space to represent that atmospheric perspective. Um, and you can see the differences in the colors right here, for sure. But there's a lot of similarities um, still. And so we, I need to be sure that these verticals read as the same thing back into space because I'm not painting, I, I'm just painting shapes back here, but I want the viewer to think, oh, those are more of those trees. I see the trees in the foreground, I see some there, yada, yada. But in order for those to feel like they're going back in space, I have to do something there to, uh, to convince the viewer. And that's I'm doing with a change in the color and the value a little bit. All right, so let me drop those mountains in real quick. See how that looks. Seems like it's a really bright purple here. And, um, you know, I think it is. So what could I do? I've got a purple that's kind of really bright there. What do I do that I could lighten it down? Well, I could put a little bit of a yellow in it, the opposite. Might actually just add a little bit of the my two colors I'm trying to use for the scene. A little bit of that green in there. Maybe that'll knock it back not be so violet and um, yeah, just a little more of that yellow you know and that that really changed it quite a bit from a purple to more of a grayed down blue I'm gonna keep that for right now because it's um, a pretty color and it gets a little tricky here to keep this color clean amid, among all those trees and such, but I can do it. And I'll come back in with these trees later and, you know, kind of um, clean up those edges. using the mountain color right now to carve out those shapes. Well, in a minute, I can come back in with the tree color and, and reestablish the positive shape of the tree again, too. Put some sky holes in there.
And yeah, I'll pop a couple in here right now. Okay, so that's coming together. Um, yeah. So I think what I will do, I'll just keep using the same brush. And um, this bank of clouds above the above the mountains there is, you know, it's substantially lighter than the mountains. So I'm I'm adding a little more white to that right now. And um, I try to make that a little more. Remember that was just my green and my red. So I'm adding a little bit more red and just some ultramarine blue in there to kind of get that. A little more violet and I'll lighten it up a bit here too yeah that's good um, so when I say good um, what I'm saying is that um, I'm comparing the contrast between the mountain and the sky there it's actually a bit of clouds all right and I'm gonna keep messing with this mixture because I want some variety a little green in there just now and I can carve out these mountains a bit maybe need to lighten it just a hair more actually and that's gonna be a soft edge on those mountains back there I mean I can barely see it in my reference Now I went into that tree, so be sure every time you do that, you wipe your brush off because I've just loaded it up with that green and I don't want that in my sky everywhere. You know, I'm using a, um, this is a six flat, by the way. Sometimes I get questions about the size of brushes. Um, they say, they being other people I've listened to on the topic over the years, um, you know, they kind of say you should Paint with the biggest brush you can comfortably paint with. Don't go too small with that. I think that's a good, good thing to keep in mind. But I'm not one to go with like a one inch house painting brush with, uh, you know, a five by seven or anything extreme like that. All right, well, we're getting some of this. So you notice I'm starting a little different this time as well. Um, I, I'm leaving my foreground. I'm kind of going right into this middle ground. And I guess the reason I'm doing that is because I want to, um, you know, I just really want to get these relationships of that distance. I mean, they're going to be really close in value. Um, and it really sets the stage, I think, for the lighting of the, the entire lighting concept here. And like I said, that that back edge there on the mountains, um, that's way off in the distance. And a lot of times it's going to be very soft. So I'm just going over that to soften that up. You know, your eye, it's, it's dusk, right? You know, your eyes are kind of adjusting to um, the low light condition. And you're saying, do I see this thing? What do I, you know, what's going on out there? So I want to replicate that back here in the painting. That's too dark. I needed to add a little white. There we go. And actually it's turning a little bit more to the, the red up here because the sun's catching a little bit of this cloud bank. So I'm going to pop some of that in here as well. I don't want to mix these in too much. So I'm, you know, I'm putting some of this color down and I'm just going to not blend it really. Um, let's get a little bit of the sky holes in there in that tree. And I, you know, I can pick up some of that tree color. It's fine. In fact, that 
adds a little bit of realism to the tree when that edge is kind of a mixture of the two colors there. Because as the leaves of the tree turn, they're going to pick up the color of that sky and such too. So it's just part of it. Uh, let's see, Jay, is your brush an opal? Um, you know, I don't think it's an opal. This one's called a, uh, this is by Princeton, and it is the Aspen series, 6500F. F is for flat, I guess. Um, you know, I've heard of the opal, but I don't think I have any of those. Not that I've consciously bought. Otherwise, I'd tell you what I thought of it, but I really don't know. They make some pretty good synthetic um, brushes anymore. Um, because, you know, in the past, the synthetics were, yeah, not so great. Uh, at least in my experience. I think that the synthetic filaments have come a long way anyway. Okay, I'll bring a little more of this violet to quinacridone red into the sky. And that'll be fun as it goes up. In fact, you know what? Let's just keep up. Let's keep rolling on this. I'm going to make this pile a little bit bigger so I've got some actual paint to mess with. Well, that's a pretty color too. You know, starting with these panels that are pre-toned and a little bit darker in value is kind of nice sometimes um, because it gives you, you know, it's not a bright white to start painting on. So I'm going to drag this really lightly into my other violets there. And that really added a, a little bit of the, um, well, just kind of a mixed uh, mixed colors here, unblended, I should say. So I've got, you know, blues and, and peach and everything else in this brush right now, which is a lot of fun. And these will show up a lot better here in just a few minutes when we complete the sky, so bear with me. Let's see, so you can get a really nice peach color um, with yellow and this quinacridone, by the way. You can see that there. Um, yeah, we'll put some of this in. We'll see what that looks like. Oh, wow. Pretty bright. You know, but I like that, actually. I think that's real fun to have those kind of pops of color in there. And it doesn't have to be the same as the reference, necessarily. I'm just trying to make a unique and fun sky here. These little dashes of color and stuff, they really will go a long way to to liven that up, right? And that's what light does in the sky at night, I think. You know, it's, um, it brightens everything up and that's what's fascinating to look at. So I'm gonna keep with these kind of um, exaggerated strokes that are in a bowl um, looking kind of thing here right now. Because I think that's a good way to go. And as we go to um, to the sun here, picking up some a little bit of really kind of strong orange red here. And I'm going to keep using the quinacridone, not cadmium red, because the cad red light's going to be really hot. 
I, you know, this is already pretty warm um, temperature wise. So look at that, but just by doing some, you know, I, I gotta just remind myself not to overpaint it. And so I lay down some color and make some, you know, callig calligraphic strokes maybe, <laughs> and then leave it. I don't wanna blend that too much, okay? Um, now, as I get more toward the center of my sun, if you, let's see, was it last week I talked about this? I forget, guys, sorry. Um, you know, that, that sun is brighter and brighter until it's just white hot in the middle there, right? So I'm trying to, trying to get to that. So I'm just going to keep going into my white. I've got a little Indian yellow here. Indian yellow is real nice because it's going to warm up that white without, without it being too heavy um, and allowing me to, to get a really bright white there without it's warm, but I don't knock down the brightness of it like a cadmium. A cadmium will tend to um, make that mixture a little bit heavy and dark right away. It's, it's not bright and full of life. And I'm going to come in here with, I like how the sun's going below this. So I'm just going to cut the bottom of the sun off a little bit there. And in fact, uh, let's see if I can pull this off. See if I can grab a little bit of that sun and just left a little line of it. I didn't really get what I was looking for there, but anyway, I was trying to just grab some of the brightness of that sun and pull it along the edge of the, um, of this cloud bank here. All right. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, I think as I go to the bottom here, I shouldn't really be doing too much refining right now, but I'm, I'm going to just do a little teeny bit right along the, the top of the mountains, I think, is just a little bit too, a little bit too dark. See if I can't lighten that up a little bit there, yeah. There we go. All right, so we've got some really kind of neat color there. And I might need to, I might need to brighten that up or something right underneath the sun here a little bit. All right. Um, and this looks a little funny right now. I will have to lighten the sky and then this is all going to come together pretty nicely, I think. Just integrate that sun in a little bit there. There we go. It doesn't look so unnatural. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone, use my 70% rule where I get it, where I feel it's like 70%, right? And then <clears throat> leave it alone a little bit. Let it sit. All right, well, let, let me try a, a round here. Um, this is a Rosemary and Company pointed round, ivory. And... Um, Yeah, I mixed up all of this color here, but I'm, I'm really not quite sold sold on it, honestly. Um, so this color, as it goes back, it's going to be a little lighter and bluer, less intense, right? And um, yeah, going back into those two colors I started with here. 
Okay, now um, that that ground plane in the distance is going to be lighter than the upright verticals, right? So that's what I'm really looking for here is a, a distinguishable light value. Um, the why I chose the round is um, you can really get some unique little brush strokes and fun marks, you know, using it on its side. You know, you can draw a line. You can use it kind of half on its side and up and down to get some unique stuff. Just looking for marks. And I can blend some of this stuff in the distance together. Um, because it's off in the distance. It's smoky and it's hazy and you're not sure what's going on, like I said earlier. So, um, yeah, I'll put some of that in there. And you'll notice in my reference, it looks a lot brighter, that green does, you know, as you get, as you look in the, the distance there. But I don't really want it to be so bright, so I'm, I'm, I get to do what I want to do here. No, really, I'm making a conscious choice because I need that green to come forward in space here. So um, I just did that very distant set of hills or you know whatever ground plane and now um you know i'm doing kind of this another distance here and i so i've i've put a little more yellow and i made it a little bit darker for this green here i don't want it to all be the same either so you know i can throw in some little bits of red and, and blue and stuff and kind of make that a, you know, maybe there's some other type of vegetation growing there. It makes the viewer kind of say, what's going on in here? Why is that different? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just building from the back coming forward here. And I've got these shrubs too. So I think what I'll do though is, um, I think I will go ahead I'm going to switch to a little bigger brush and maybe get these um, these shrubs in place. Yeah, I lied. I'm going to, in the front here, I'm going to come down and I'm going to try to make a, a little bit more, um, you know, it's going to be a darker green. And I'll get something down here, we'll see. I don't want it to be necessarily too green, but I'm, I'm gonna start with a little more on the red side and get some of the base in here. But see, that's really pretty dark. Cover up my eight by 10, you sure you got that by now? And I'm just gonna get, I mean, you can see how well this, you know, stands up against the, uh, you know, the dark side of the shrub there. It's still very light, so I think that's going to work just fine. And I'm being kind of, you know, maybe messy with it a little bit here. Because I, I, I can't have it all just one green, so I'm just getting some of this green down. And then as I step back a little bit, it's going to be a little more light and blue. And that's going to be... Now, I've redesigned... <laughs> I've designed these shrubs a little bit to my, my liking here, so... Bear with me, it's not going to look exactly like the, the reference. But see how I'm, yeah, just modulating, changing this color as it goes back in space here. That goes a long way to helping give the impression of, of space changing. 
off in the distance there. And I can even add, you know, a little bit of this color into the distance just to, just to integrate them a little bit more. But I don't want to overdo that. Okay, and then as I come forward, I'm going to add a little more yellow to that. Right in here. Now it's a yellow, yeah, it is a yellow grass, but at the same time, you know, you've got this kind of cool going on. So what happens, I think, at night is that I see, you know, on the tops of the grass, you get this kind of a, you know, silvery bluish green. I like that. I'll get a little bit of that going in here. And this looks like it was a mowed field. I'm not going to mow it. It's going to be a rougher field in my picture. And as I come down to the foreground here, definitely I've got a little darker and some of the cool shadow blues. Having a little bit of these, um, you know, these darker tones at the base of your painting can help you know, keep your viewer in the painting as well. Just kind of covering up all the all the little spots there. Make sure everything's covered with paint, and then as I come up along the the bottom side of these uh, shrubs, I've definitely got a darker tone as well. Doesn't have to be too, too pronounced, but anyway, modeling some of that in there. So let's get the, let's get these shrubs in there. Um, how can I differentiate the shrubs from the grass? Well, that's going to be a little bit tough, I think. Um, definitely have a blue-green. I'm going to build that right here. So I'm going to start with some of this edge where the shadow starts to turn into the, you know, the part of the shrub that's um, in the light. And I'm just kind of going subtle right now and just trying to build, build the form of this a little bit. Definitely see that here as well. And some of these colors come up into the shrub as well. And then we turn into basically a, another bit of light. So I'm making that, I'm turning the, the green, I'm making it lighter in value now. And I'm going to test this. It's a little bit, a little bit too green, I think. Um, but is the value okay? So instead of painting all these little leaves and stuff, I'm just going to try and model the form. And I'll have to come, you know, back and forth on this a little bit. It seems a little bit light to me, actually. You know, and then on the front end here of this shrub, I'm getting a lot of green. OK, 
Okay, so that's kind of the middle. And then the very top is definitely lighter and more yellow. I don't want to make it hot though, so I still got to keep it on the cool side. And it is still pretty dark. You know, if you squint and look at the reference photo, it's still dark relative to that. But I got to do something to to set this green apart from the green that's in the background. So I'm lightening it. I'm lighting lightening it quite a bit here. See if I can get away with that or not. I might, what I might have to do then is come out and uh, modify the background a little bit, which is okay too. And then I've got kind of a, <clears throat> a more yellowy, yellowy green shrub behind there. So I'm going to boost that up. A little too warm there, but I can cool things with white also. Remember, white's a really cool color. This is titanium white. And so, um, yeah, titanium white cools things down a lot. It also can make it kind of chalky which works good for this because, um, you know, I mean, it's at night. Yeah, I want, I want a more unique edge there, I think, but... See what we can get. I need to make that darker. So that can, the bottom of this one can kind of separate from the top of this other shrub. I'm, I'm loading the paint on pretty good too, if you notice there. So I'm not really afraid to do that right now. I could lose control of it a little bit. But I can always fix that if I do. Let's see. And sometimes this, you know, variegated paint, these chunks of paint on here. Oops, I got a big chunk of dry paint there. Um, you know, it can make some interesting stuff like that. All right, so I have a lot of green going on in here. And I guess my reference does too. So, um, you know, I need to spend some time basically making the ground plane separate. So I'm going to leave that right now though, and I'm going to finish off the sky. So then I can make the final decisions on that ground plane. All right, so what do I want to do with my sky here? First of all, I need a little bit of room on my palette to mix. Some of that sky color here. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for joining. Let me see. You have a question. Like that is that. Yeah, so Jessica's asking if um, because of the low light time of day, is that why I have the darks in the foreground? And in art school, I think she had, was taught at some point that, um, you know, darks are for recession in space. Um, 
Yeah, so the whole ground plane being the end of the day is definitely a darker value here. And so I'm trying to find that. Um, there's not a lot of value contrast in the different items, except for the fact that the trees being upright are generally darker, and the ground plane is lighter because it's reflecting some of the light from the, uh, the dome of the sky. Um, in atmospheric perspective, though, the darks are going to be closer to you. The higher contrast and the darker darks are going to be closer to you, and you reduce contrast and your darks get lighter the further you go back into space. So um, that's a good rule of thumb. Of course, you just you need to respond to what you're seeing in, in real life, but um, that's a really good rule of thumb to um, keep in mind when you're trying to make a believable sense of... Um, of atmospheric perspective, things going off in the distance. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is get a sky color. It's going to be really light. And I want it to be different than these other colors I put down. So I can see those right here. This is the clouds, for example. So that's quite a bit lighter than the clouds. I can just test that right there. And I know before I put a mark on my canvas, that's going to be pretty light. Now, watch as I put this on here. This is going to really show up. <laughs> and the reason that really shows up vibrant like that is because um, the panel was pre-toned. So that's kind of cool. And I don't really want it too, too vibrant blues, so I'm going to try to keep that kind of a neutral, neutral color. It looks really blue right now, but once I cover up this, you know, it looks cool and blue because the, the pre-tone is warm and neutral. And so color is all relative to what it's around. Okay, and then as this comes down, it gets a little bit, you know, into those... Yeah, it kind of almost gets a little brownish feeling. Um, and that's the orange in the sky, for sure. I'm not going to be able to paint all these clouds and such, right? So I'm going to give the appearance of some of what's going on there without painting it exactly like I see in my reference. And then integrating, you know, going around some of these other warm colors I put down earlier. And I can leave some of the panel showing through too, that's fine. If, I, if that color works for me, um, then yeah, don't worry about doing that. It's kind of, kind of pretty there. So I'll drag a little bit of this blue over some of the, uh, those warm notes I put in earlier. So they've had enough time to sit a little bit. And so I'm able to drag this color over the top without it, um, you know, mixing into a brown. Because if you take a cool color and a warm color and you mix them together, you get, you neutralize them basically, right? So that's kind of nice. I like that. Maybe at the top I'll lighten this even a little bit more. I don't really want it to compete with the sun, but sometimes adding, you know, just some, some really lighter areas in the sky really does reinforce that, you know, there's air and light up there and yeah, I kind of like that. You know, that has a very, um, it almost has a pastel feel to it right there. I'm kind of getting that vibe. 
Okay, I like that sky. That's really pretty nice. Um, I think what I will do then is come back into some of these colors. Maybe like these here, this yellow. Keeping it light. And then um, maybe drag a little bit of that in here. You'll notice there's a few edges of clouds that have a highlight on them. That's a nice, nice feel. I'm just hitting that ever so lightly too. I'm going to do the same with more of a, a rose color here too now. Just to add some more light into the sky but not take it too much. There we go. And then I think, um, looking at my son, that it is still pretty um, I could add a little more white into that, I think, which I'm having trouble getting to here. The white's not wanting to stick. Took a little bit extra there. Okay, so I think I've got um, all the, the main elements in as far as a block in goes. Now I will work on um, refining the foreground here and making it, you know, making it um, read logically as far as what the shapes are and, and all of that. And, um, and still stand out as far as the... Um, you know, these shrubs. So I think I'm going to need to do a little more work on the shrubs first. So I'm going to make a violet here. And um, I, so I put down this transparent dark to begin with. And I'm using ultramarine blue and, um, you know, that's quinacridone red now which are both transparents, but I, I have white in the brush. So I'm going to lose some of that here and that's okay. What I'm trying to do is reshape, reshape, reshape the shrub <laughs> um, here in the foreground. I can leave a little bit of that kind of warm undertone there, but I really, I'm really going to kind of take some of the cues from the reference. and try to make this feel uh, a little more shrub-like than I have. You know, and already right there I kind of feel a three-dimensionality that I didn't have just a minute ago in that front one. I'm going to keep that color basically the same and I'm going to move over and, and um, go in behind it here. Try to put some of that in the bush behind it, shrub. And the same thing over here. Actually, this one might. Thinking about my design now. So this this shrub here might maybe that'll look better if I put it, um, you know, coming over here a little bit more. I don't know. Could work. 
you know, and then as I go back in space, I can reestablish that, um, you know, there's more of these shrubs off here in the distance. Okay, so I'm just building this pattern again a bit. Something that's pleasing there. And I'll add a little more white to it as I go back. There we go. So I, I like this little pattern better here now that I have. Um, I might just make this one bigger. And I can always go in, in certain areas, you know, and really put a dark in that I might need. Or even an interesting, I mean, I'm hiding in some of these purple violets, uh, really pretty distinct in this foreground shrub here. Because, you know, why not? Okay, so that did a lot to help me get my structure back, I think. Um, then I think really I need, I might scrape some of this paint off here. You know, and you can get some cool effects just doing some scraping too, by the way. You know, which I, I like in the foreground sometimes. But what I'm going to do is just get rid of some of that extra paint right there so I can... I can go in and do what I need to do without it being all goopy. See, once I pick up the palette knife, I kind of like messing with it. So, especially in the distance there. See, I can grab this paint that's off in the distance and drag that down and get a nice smooth transition of color. Kind of fun. I can, I can even scrape this back a bit if I wanted to. I can do that right here. Get some of those lines off in the distance, right? Yeah, see, those are nice. And when I do that and I pull down vertically, then I get rid of those brush strokes that sometimes will catch the light in a gallery setting and um, make that, that darker value shape kind of stand out. All right, any questions? Okay, so I think um, <clears throat> I think what I'm gonna do is get the tops of these shrubs where I like them. I'll use a smaller brush for that. And I'm pretty close on that now, I think. Scraping, oh, I got a lot of white there. Um, scraping down that color there kind of gave me some interesting stuff to to think about. And um, now it's kind of opened it back up to where I can make some decisions on my color and value temperatures as I as I finish off these these shrubs. And this is definitely lighter. The tops of these you know, and I've got got some of that that's coming down into the around the sides. But as it turns toward me, it's getting away from that sunlight and it's you know, these are darker, more green greens. I'm getting there. So this is the refinement. This is where you're bringing all the, you know, all the little elements together and you're trying to, um, 
you know, you're trying to make everything work together. You're refining your shapes. Um, and just starting to make a pleasing picture. And so I'm designing in here again, too. I like these little concave shapes. And uh, when I'm doing that, then I'm getting, you know, I'm building the feel of the shrub. So as I go over here, you know, I've got these, something going on there. And I don't really want to make it too, um, I want to make it a little bit different shape than this one that's lying kind of on its side. And then as I go back here, um, that guy is a lot less green. And it's lighter, so. Those kind of all find, follow the same path on the ground plane, so I'm not liking that, but I'll adjust that. Okay, so let me work on that ground plane a little bit, switch my brushes. And I'm going to try to go a little more, maybe even a little peachy on here. Well, that kind of went brown. See what a little bit of that color does in there. You know what I might need? Here's what I need. I need just a hint of this. Color like I've almost got a little, uh, yeah, a little water or something that that's picking up. And what this is doing is uh, just bringing a little bit of that sky color into my landscape. It's really muted. It looks brown on the palette, but it's enough that it um, kind of har harmonizes and pulls some of the elements of the. Uh, of the sky uh, down into the landscape here. And what I'm doing there is just dragging a little bit of a lighter blue, lighter blue-green off in the distance there. And um, you know, I like, I like this, but I think there's too much repetition here, so I'm going to pull this guy flat, reestablish the ground plane there. It's going to come out over here. I'm going to bring this right up to my shrub. So I'm creating an edge right there of the lighter versus the, you know, the lighter ground plane versus the darker uh, part of the, the shrub that's in shadow. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, you can kind of tell at this point I'm uh, abandoning the photo reference, you know, to a big extent, not because I don't like it, but now I'm just trying to get, um, you know, some interesting br brush work and, and edges and stuff in here. You know, and, and so these little brush strokes I'm putting in here that are lighter, I think they're kind of bringing you, I hope they're bringing you, the viewer, you know, into this foreground a little bit more or into the middle ground I should say 
I don't know if I like that so much. That was a little brighter than I was anticipating. I mean, this could be a little, uh, well, let's do it. This could be just, a, you know, a little bit of water. I mean, that's pretty amazing, huh? Just a touch of that sun there. And all of a sudden you have a feel of some water. I don't even need to do anything more than that, really. I could overpaint that really easy. Um, but what I can do is maybe just bring a little bit of those colors into the, um, you know, the surrounding landscape a little bit more, too. So I'm going to bring some of the, the cooler sky into um, some of the areas here. Phil, you were thinking there would be, it'd be a good place for a, a pond too? Yeah. Great minds. Um, try to put a little, just drag a little bit of this blue way back in there. You get this kind of uh, misty haze at night. Oh yeah, that's really feeling feeling like that. Now look at the look at the trees, the big verticals. I haven't touched anything there. I kind of like them and I don't know if I'll really mess with them too much. Um, tell me what you guys think about the, the upright vertical trees. So like I said, I'm, I'm putting in some of these blue, these cools right now on some of the edges of the, um, of the shrubs. And what that's doing is just having a little bit of the sky, the reflection of the sky um, hitting those leaves and leaves a nice little cool. Might even have some of that up here. Don't want to mess with that too much because I, I do like it. Make that a little more tree like. There we go. Hey, Gary, thanks. I'm glad you like it. And now, so, um, this tree was very um, dark in the foreground here. And that's fine. But what I can do is the top of that tree, really, in, in real life, you know, it wouldn't be that, that dark. So, I'm using some of the, um, you know, this brush has, you know, it's just a little bit polluted with lighter colors. So I'm able to just kind of mess with that and lighten the top of the tree a little bit here. And then I won't, hopefully won't mess up the bottom here too much. I'll leave that. And then this one over here. Even put a little branch out there or something. It's weird because sometimes, you know, you, you put in some of the effort to add the detail and you think it's going to be better for it. And it turns out that it's not. <laughs> so if you've ever done that, you're not alone. We all do it. Hey, Diane, thanks for the comment. And Jessica... Yeah, I think I'll leave the trees. Good call, guys. So, um, okay, the, the, the little icing on the top of the cake here is going to be just a few more of these little 
little highlights of these warm colors. Not really highlights, but just a few on some of these trees that might be picking up a little bit of that light. And I think this is the magic part, really. This to me is like, um, you know, it just kind of tells you that, you know, there's just little confetti dots of color that are hitting, hitting these grasses now and then. And they're fun to look at. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to make it look like water down here, right? But a few of those just really activates that foreground, I think. All right, then what else would I do here? Um, so, you know, I really roughed in the trees in the very background, and I don't think I need to mess with those. I'm going to leave them. Um, let's see, I've got this color for my mountains. And um, there's a few edges here that are not quite right. Clean that up. That kind of thing. Thank you, Dana. You know, my, my test for, um, for a lot of my paintings is just, you know, am I, Am I kind of transported back to when I took the photo? You know, what was the feel? Yeah, I was walking with uh, my dog, Hershey, out here and snapped a picture west of town. Or, you know, looking west, not west of town. But, um, you know, he was out. We were walking, and the end of the day, really nice time with the dog. And um, I just remember the, you know, it was the moist air. And the, um, you know, just the cool, just the cool of the earth. It, you know, you could, it was one of those nights it was, you know, you could feel the moisture in the air and that was a real nice treat because I think, you know, it's a hot day. Okay. Now I'm just messing with this edge again. I don't know that I really should too much, but um, don't be afraid to do that because, you know, these edges of the mountains and stuff off in the distance, they just kind of disappear. All right. Well, I think that's... Uh, I think that's a good one. Now, I can't sign these. Um, you know, you've seen me before use this sharpened little end of a handle, and I would normally just sign my name in, but, you know, if I try that here... Um, it doesn't work so well because the, you know, the, um, the panel is pre-primed. So what I have to do in those cases is I'll just wait and, um, scratch my name in, or not scratch my name in, but once it's dry, I'll paint my name in probably down in the middle here. That's a nice little area. I always try to think about where did you leave yourself room to, uh, <laughs> to put your signature. And, um, yeah, I think this one is a, a success. You know, the, uh, if I squint down, you lose a lot of the detail in the foreground. Everything's in shadow like the reference was. The sun looks um, adequately bright. I might work on this edge a little bit here just to lighten that edge, like you're getting a bleed of the sunlight coming through the top edge of that cloud. Um, and um, I'll see what happens when it, when this dries. A lot of these really bright, you know, the lights that are bright and they, they kind of pop off the canvas here. Um, when they dry, sometimes they lose a little bit of that and they need a second coat almost. It's like a second coat of paint on, you know, room. Um, and that's okay too. So sometimes you just need to let the paint absorb into the, the surface there and see what you're left with. And, um, you know, if you need to punch up a couple of those areas, that's fine too. So let me switch cameras, and I will see you in just one second.
All right. Well, I hope that was fun to watch. Um, you know, like I said, I like painting that kind of light, and I, I added two colors, the quinacridone. Um, red was a key part of it. It's a really cool red, but vibrant. And um, and then the green. What was the green called now? Uh, anyway. Um, and by adding those colors to my palette, then I was able to create those, cr those really kind of cool blues and... Um, uh, you know the grays. I really like how those two mix those that green and that red come together and make a blue and a violet really kind of a neat uh, Color combination. So I think I'm gonna push myself to use those more on my palette and um, You know, I'm in a habit. I, I use uh, like ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide to make my darks and um, That's not the only way it's a really good combination to make darks But sometimes you just gotta you know, maybe put a hand tie one hand behind your your back a little bit and make it more difficult, give yourself a challenge. And I could do that by switching out um, and using my, you know, the, the greens and the uh, the red there to uh, make a neutral dark that's a little bit different. And it's a cooler neutral dark. Um, so yeah, just if there's any other comments here or questions, beautiful painting. Hey, thanks a lot. Hey, lots of great comments tonight. So I really appreciate that. Um, again, it's an eight by 10. I will sign that after it dries make some modifications to it. But I think you're seeing a painting here tonight that's about 95, you know, 97% done. Um, we'll just see how it dries and if there's any refinements that need to be done. But yeah, it is what it is. And that's kind of nice. These low light scenes come together pretty easily. You get nice melded colors and um, just really easy to look at. I like these kind of paintings a lot. So thanks for joining me tonight. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up anytime. Uh, links below for some of the materials on my website. Um, I have a workshop coming up in June. If you haven't heard about that already, I do have some spots left in that. It's June 9, 10, and 11 in Winter Park, Colorado. You can go to my website. There's a link below for that information as well. So if you have any questions on that, it's three days with me. Um, plein air painting in beautiful Colorado. I'd love to see you there. So with that... I will bid you a uh, good night and thank you all for joining tonight and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.